Just an update on how we're doing on the Coronet, or Nerona, if you choose. Uh, we have a brand new spring in there, and we do have some improvement in performance, but really not much. I have to say I was not particularly impressed with the design of the motor, which I showed in the last video. Yeah, it's pretty conventional. It's a pillar and plate design, but there's no bearings in it. I mean, there's no ball bearings and little caps underneath the main shaft or on either side of the governor. The governor is a vertical style, you know, just up and down like that, and uh, just goes into a couple of bronze bushings on either end that are cast or staked into the plates. And not a really great design. I mean, I suppose it works. And I suppose this would work fine with the little tiny records, like the little wonders and such like that that fit that turntable. But the big records, which overhang all the way out to here, before I replaced the spring, they'd spin up to 78. But the minute you put the tone arm on it, they immediately slowed to half speed. It didn't stop. Yeah, well, with the original spring, they did stop. With the uh, replacement spring, it doesn't quite slow to half speed, but definitely slows down a considerable amount. It doesn't stop. It does power through, but at the speed like this, which is useless, pretty much. Now, there are a couple of different reasons this could be happening. One is that it's pretty cold in here. It's a dead of winter. You know, it's 45, 48 degrees in here, and even the lightest greases and oils can thicken up in those temperatures, which a stronger motor would not really notice so much, like the 101, the 102, or the big control of the 8, or whatever I've been playing with lately. However, a tiny motor like this with a very weak spring, the spring is small, it's not long at all, it's like 10 feet long, it's 3 quarter inches wide, it's not really that strong, it's, it's like one step above a clock spring really. It may play great on a 75, 80 degree day, but in the cold, that could definitely account for the slowing down. Or it could be that the bronze bushings are a little bit worn. And what's happening is when I put pressure, this is a heavy tone arm and a heavy reproducer. And there's just no relief for it. There's no you know, elbow here to take some of the weight of the tone arm off. It just rides the record really heavy. And it's putting pressure, see out to here, like this, causing the record on the turntable to tilt a little bit because the bearings might have a bit of war. They had, they would have to have a bit of war on them, wear rather, and that's putting enough pressure on the motor to slow it up. That's what I suspect. The gears aren't meshing properly at that point, and everything just slows up. Not impressed. Not impressed, which is a shame. With a better motor, this would be a cool little machine. But for now, I'm simply going to put it aside and wait for warmer weather. I, I don't want to hang it over the stove, the wood stove, you know, with ropes to warm it up or anything like that. We'll just wait till summertime and we'll try it again then. Until then, I don't want to be messing with anything else until I know exactly what the problem is. So we'll just put it away for now. That, or oh, you know, the other possibility is this was never designed to use 10 inch records, possibly. Maybe it was designed to play the little wonder style, you know, little sevens and, or what are those five inch records, whatever they are. Yeah, that could be the reason too. And we'll go into that at another time. I don't have any little wonders here with me. So uh, the little record over there is actually not, that's a vinyl record from the 50s. That's not really designed, just came with the machine. That's not designed to play on this. So we'll put it aside for now and we will revisit the topic at a later date. The Coronet Portable. Start to get those little paint spotters off the case too.